Ken's knowledge and love of nature and his fine aesthetic eye have revealed an awesome hidden world that would otherwise elude us. As wondrous as the spectacle of growth are the images Ken has recorded of nature's dramatic cycle of decay and transformation. An ordinary housefly spies the carcass of a mouse, a perfect place to lay its eggs. The eggs will transform into maggots and in just four days devour the mouse. I wanted to do a complete sequence, so the spider spinning a web, and then a fly flying into the web, and the spider coming down and attacking the fly. I wanted to do a high-speed shot, and if you just try pot luck, you're wasting a lot of film, a lot of money. So I finally devised a system where I could attach the fly to a wire with uh, crazy glue and uh, position him so he looked like he was normally flying and then mechanically plunge the fly into the web. What I was doing was shooting close-ups, so I had a very narrow margin of where the fly could be. And the lights are so bright and hot, they can only be on for uh, several seconds or they would kill the fly. Okay, three, two, one, go! Its movement slowed down by more than a hundred times. The fly approaches the web and then becomes ensnared. In the real world of nature, once the fly hits the web, it sets up vibrations, which the spider picks up. He'll immediately go down and grab the fly, wrap it in web, and take it back up to his lair. And then he devours the fly. Weeks of frustration and failed attempts finally yielded for Ken a scene of eerie beauty, a new mosquito emerging from its pupa. The success of this remarkable shot soon led to another, one that was just as demanding. Over the years, I've gotten quite a number of calls requesting a mosquito biting a person. And eventually I thought, well, I better do that. The first time I tried this, I hired somebody to come in and put the mosquito on their arm, but the person was so nervous that immediately the thing went out of focus. So I decided the only way to get it is to use my own hand, I guess. There. It's really not one of my favorite shots. Finger. There we go. Now let's let him settle, or her, rather. Okay, she's starting to bite now. Let's check the camera.
It's kind of fascinating uh, looking at the mosquito because you can see it swell up and become quite red with your blood. I really hate this. Well, she's done. Oh man, she gave me a good one. I'm gonna have that for days. The archerfish is kind of unique. If he sees an insect up on a rock, he'll shoot a stream of water at it and knock it into the water, and then he feeds on it. Yeah, we'll see if this archer fish is ready to photograph. I'll give you a little fly here on the rock. And he's not quite used to this set yet. I had him out in the greenhouse, and he was working beautifully, but I wanted a better looking set. So I built this set just recently, and put him in it, but he's, he's not used to it yet. He's gonna have another few days anyway. Three days later, Ken tries once again. Well, let's try you out. I think you're about ready now. We'll put a live fly on the rock. Now, let's see. He, he should be ready. I think he'll do it. You know where the fly is. Come on, right up there. All right, ready? Come on, baby. Okay, that's it. Beautiful. I knew you could do that. Once more, Ken's patience and skill result in remarkable shots. Some of Ken's most breathtaking images are of tiny, fragile crystals as they form themselves into shapes which reflect their molecular structure. They are part of an invisible micro-world that Ken has recorded on film. His wide array of filmmaking techniques includes the exacting art of photomicrography, and the process of crystallization is one of his favorite subjects. Each chemical has its own pattern. One of the difficult parts of shooting crystals is uh, keeping them in focus. You're not too sure just which way they're going to grow. Yeah, looks like it's going to be a take. Oh, hi, guy. You want a mealworm? Hey. Ken Middleham has always enjoyed a special, almost magical connection with the natural world around him. Come on down here. It is perhaps the most captivating aspect of this okay. most extraordinary man. There you are. Oh, boy, you're hungry, aren't you? Huh? This is a really beautiful lizard, and um, he appeared last year and I started training him to come down and feed out of my hand. And kind of amazing thing, they uh, hibernate in the winter, and I didn't see him for a complete winter. And then uh, the next spring he appeared, and I came out to feed him, and he came right down on my knee. So he's got quite a memory. There you go. Sure. There you go. Okay, I'll well, see you tomorrow. We humans go along at a certain pace in life. We see things at our speed. When we see clouds, we move very slowly to us. But if you shoot them in time lapse, you can see what they're really doing. They're not only moving across the sky, they're revolving and they're dispersing, they're misting, they're evaporating. They're doing all kinds of things that you don't normally see. I guess I've always liked the surprises that you get when you alter time to reveal something that we normally don't see. You're revealing the beauty of nature, really. <laughs>